us want to have a meaningful life. That's true for people with disabilities too. And for many of us, that means we want to work. The good news is there are more options for employment and training for people with disabilities than there ever has been before. Many people with disabilities will start out by reaching out to vocational rehabilitation services. People call that VR or Voc Rehab for short. They are a state agency whose whole purpose is to help people with disabilities find community-based, competitive wage employment. They can do that in a lot of different ways. For example, they can set up job shadowing. They can provide job coaches to help teach job skills and help with that transition to work. They can help with assistive technology or accommodations a person may need to work. They may be able to help connect people to transportation through public transportation or door-to-door -door public transportation, specifically for people with disabilities. If it's necessary for a person's work goal, they may even be able to pay for appropriate driver's education. If a person is interested in additional training, whether that's for an initial job, to keep a job, or to an advanced career, VR may also be able to help with supports for that by paying for training, providing assistive technology, providing note takers or tutors, or other supports a person may need. If a person with a disability is at least 14 years old and still in school, they can take part in the Pre-Employment Transition Services, or PRE-ETS program through VR. This program is designed to help students with disabilities get the supports and skills they need to transition to the work world. They help students with career exploration, work-based learning experiences, counseling on post-secondary opportunities, work readiness training, and instruction in self-advocacy. While this program is often done in conjunction with schools, it is a VR program, so it is not restricted to the school calendar or school resources. If families are interested in learning more about this program, they can contact their school's transition coordinator to connect them with their local pre -ETS program. The Department of Workforce Development also has resources that may be able to help. Many people think of DWD as the Work One office, but that is only one of the things they do. They help fund adult education programs, so if a person got a certificate of completion in high school, they can help them get their high school equivalency. DWD also has a lot of free online tools that can help with everything from training programs to teaching job skills like locating information, business writing, applied technology, teamwork, and workplace observation. While there are a lot more opportunities and options for employees with disabilities, many people with disabilities and their families are worried about the impact of employment on their benefits. The good news is that there are a lot of work incentives and programs to help people with disabilities work. If a person is working with VR, they can ask to speak to a Benefit Information Network, or BIN officer. This is a specialist who can look at a person's specific situation and determine what work incentives and programs they are eligible for. A BIN officer tailors their information to each individual and each situation. And while working may lower a person's social security check, at the end of the day, a person will always bring home more money when they are working. The second concern involves the possibility of losing Medicaid or waiver services. First, remember that an individual on a waiver has special income limits for Medicaid. People on the Family Supports, CIH, or A&D waiver can make up to 300% of the maximum SSI benefit and have full Medicaid. However, there's another program that allows people with disabilities to work and keep their Medicaid. In 2002, Indiana created a program called MedWorks. It literally stands for Medicaid for Employees with Disabilities. The state realized that there were a lot of people with disabilities who could work and who wanted to work, but they needed the extra health coverage Medicaid could provide so that they were able to work. So Indiana created MedWorks to allow people with disabilities who are working to buy in to Medicaid. It is a managed care form of Medicaid and people will pay a premium based on their income, but it allows them to keep their Medicaid benefits and it is a compatible form of Medicaid for the waiver. There are also some extra benefits with MedWorks though. First, you can have private insurance, including employer-based insurance and Medicaid at the same time with MedWorks. You can also make up to 350% of the poverty level and have MedWorks. When a person has MedWorks, they can have retirement savings like a 401k or an IRA, and it is not counted as an asset by Medicaid. You can have a cemetery plot that is not counted against you. 
You can also have the regular exemptions like one home and one car, a special needs trust and an ABLE account, as well as some other specialty accounts that do not count toward that $2,000 asset limit for a single individual. There are a couple of catches though. First, the Social Security Administration must determine that you are disabled in order to go on MedWorks. Although, a person may be able to keep MedWorks if they work themselves off of Social Security disability benefits. They can request to go on MedWorks Improved, which is a slightly different category, and the Medicaid Medical Review Team will determine if the person's disability is still significant enough to allow them to stay on MedWorks. The second catch, you must be working. If a person loses their job involuntarily, they can keep their MedWorks for up to 12 months if they are working with VR, DWD, or another approved employment provider to find a new job, or if they are enrolled in a school to work transition program. Yes, people with disabilities can work, and there are a lot of different programs, work incentives, and opportunities available to help them achieve their employment goals. For more information on this and other topics, visit the Arc of Indiana at arcind.org and the Indiana Family and Social Services Administration at in.gov FSSA. And please, don't hesitate to contact a family advocate at the Arc of Indiana by calling 317-977-2375 or 800-382-9100.